J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens the program with Everything is Rhythm in My Heart from First in Girl. Is rolling off a log. That's an expression we all use, but I know an even better way to describe something easy, and here it is. Easy as making jello. Because jello really is amazingly simple to prepare, and whenever you make jello, you're making a dessert that's certain to please everyone. For jello's famous true fruit flavor always gets a great reception. But just remember that you can find that grand extra rich fruit flavor only in genuine jello. All six delicious flavors are extra rich. And they come from fresh, ripe fruit. Easy to make, easy to take. That's Jell-O. The most popular gelatin dessert in the entire world today. That's Jell-O, too. So don't accept any substitute. Be sure you get the real thing. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. we bring you our radiant master of ceremonies with warmth in his heart and a cold in his head, Jack Benny. Hello again. This is Jack Benny speaking to you through a Kleenex. So don't get too close to your radios, folks. You know, you know how these colds spread. Uh, where did you get that cold, Jack? Uh, down at the racetrack. You know, I went out to uh, Santa Anita yesterday. Oh, well, why didn't you wear an overcoat? I did, Don. I wore one on the way out. The bookmaker wore it home. I oh, <laughs> usually do, don't they? <laughs> I tell you one thing, Don. I'm through with horses. That fourth race yesterday cured me. Well, that's all what happened. Well, Don, I didn't mind when my horse stopped in the middle of the race and quit cold. But when he came over to the rail and asked me if I heard Fred Allen Wednesday <laughs> night, that was going a little too far. <laughs> How can a horse run during the day when he's up all night listening to the radio? Well, you know, Jack, even they have to have a little fun. Uh, say, Don, <laughs> do you think Alan could have bribed those people to say I couldn't play the bee? Why, Jack, I thought you told me this morning that you were going to forget all about him. Oh, yes. Uh, just slip by. But... Well, anyway, I <laughs> swore I'd, <clears throat> I'd never bet on another horse as long as I live. Unless it's a sure thing, you know. Hi, Don. Mm. Hello, sucker. <laughs> Listen, Mary, you didn't do so well at the track yourself yesterday. I didn't, eh? No. I came home with three winners and a jockey. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Anyway, I only had bad luck in one race. Yeah, what happened? What happened? The jockey forgot his smudge pot and my horse was frozen at the post. <laughs> No, Mary, why do you make those things up? Good practice in case I ever get on a comedy program. Yeah. <laughs> Something funny about this. <laughs> well, that's my ambition, too. <laughs> my, my ambition, yeah. Hiya, fellas. Hello, Jack. Hello, Fred. I mean, Kenny. <laughs> oh, Jack, why don't you get Alan off your mind? He's not on my mind, just because I happen to say Fred. There are a lot of Freds. There's Fred McMurray, Fred Astaire, Fred Stone... There are millions of Fred, aren't they, Kenny? Yeah, but Alan's the funniest. <laughs> Is that so? Huh? Say, who was that J.B. he was kidding about last Wednesday night? J.B., probably George Burns. You know, he spells by ear. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to talk about him. Let's forget F.A. That's short for fake, and that's what he is. Ha! Let him top that one! <laughs> Don't worry, he will. Oh, yeah? Well, let's forget it. What's that paper you got there, Kenny? I don't know. I found it at the racetrack. Let's see it. Oh, it's a dope sheet. A what? A sheet dope. <laughs> oh, you can say it either way. Yeah. <laughs> you have a good time at the track, Kenny? I'll say. They got better hot dogs there than at Ocean Park. Oh, so you, you just go there to eat, huh? You said it. I saw him with a hot dog so big, I put $2 on it to show. <laughs> That's awful. 
me. <laughs> I just put mustard on it. Oh, you did, huh? Come in. <laughs> Special delivery for Mary Livingston. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> the way he's laughing, it must be from my mother. Hey, that's good. We could stand a few laughs. <laughs> well, you can go, boy. What? I say, you can go. What are you standing there grinning at me for? <laughs> so you're the guy that can't play the V. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> hmm. Wise guy. If I didn't have this cold, I'd go right after him. Between Alan and horses and colds and... and uh, uh, play, Phil. Give me an aspirin, Mary. <laughs> Phil Harrison is orchestra. And by the way, Phil, I want to tell you what a nice time I had at your house last Sunday night and how much I enjoyed meeting your mother and your sister, Lucy Bell. Say, she's a knockout. Well, she thinks a lot of you too, Jack. Uh, does she really? She certainly does. She's been talking about you all week long. Gee, <laughs> no kidding, Phil. Yes, huh? sir. As far as she's concerned, you're the tops. Gosh. <laughs> well, I've been... Uh... Come in. That's your pulse. Oh. <laughs> well, well, it's good to know I'm alive, you know. Yeah. And that... And that reminds me, Kenny, you embarrassed me terribly at Phil's party, always hungry. Well, I didn't serve anything. Well, that's no excuse. And another thing, you can't eat goldfish. You can't, eh? No. Wait till they look in the bowl. <laughs> Candy. <laughs> Say, Phil, is Lucy Bell coming up to the broadcast tonight? You knew she was. No, I didn't, really. Yeah? What have you got that new suit on for? This isn't a new suit. Then take off the tag. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, you got to laugh tonight, didn't you? I bet I, I bet I could think of an answer if I didn't have this cold. Jack, I'm not a doctor, but uh, you know what I think would be good for you? What? Why don't you take some Jell-O, dissolve it in warm water, mm -hmm. stir thoroughly... And then after it cools, add some sliced bananas and have it with your dinner tonight. Oh, will that cure my cold? I don't know, but it's a swell dessert. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll try it for the sake of my job. Or my cold. <laughs> well, Mary, what are you laughing at? This letter from Mama is a riot. <laughs> well, if it's that good, let's hear it. See, your mother's letters are always funny. Go ahead, read it. All huh? right. Mm -hmm. uh, Plainville, N.J., Jan 29, T.H.-37. Hmm. What is that, a code? No, I'm all right. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> uh, dear daughter Mary, received your letter, and I was sure glad to hear from you. 
We have been having very unusual weather in Plainfield, too. Hmm, must be pretty cold there. Uh, your brother Hillard had a touch of the flu, but he is now up and around. Hmm. This morning he got up and chased his nurse around the room. Hmm. I wonder who won there. Uh, your sister Rita's having trouble with her eyes again and keeps running into things all the time. Hmm. So I guess we'll either have to get her new glasses or bumpers. <laughs> Now, that's, that's silly. Uh, tell Jack I know it, but I gotta laugh. <laughs> a fine letter. Go on, huh? Uh, last night, there was a lot of excitement at the Palace Theater. We went to see Camille. In the middle of the picture, Camille took sick and died, so we got our money back. Oh. Uh, it sure happened quick. She was in perfect health when we sat down. Well, that's, that's life for you. Yeah. Uh, no more news at present, except your father is very busy making out his income tax. Hmm. He treats a solitaire, too. Nice about your father. Uh, tell Jack we're all quite interested in his fight with Fred Allen. And speaking of the bee, will you please send me a check for $25? <laughs> uh, love from us all, your mater. Hmm, mater? I should get in quite high class there. Uh... Oh, here's a P.S. Oh. Uh, please ask Kenny to sing Sweetheart, Let's Grow Old Together. And wish him the best of luck, as I know I'm tough to follow. <laughs> well, that's mighty sweet of the mater. Uh, think you can follow her, Kenny? Oh, sure. What's a mater, Jack? Well, mater is a Latin word meaning an ancestor on the maternal side. Do you get it? Yeah. <laughs> What are you laughing at, Kenny? That's not a joke. I don't care. I'm not fussy. <laughs> Go ahead and sing. Gee, I wish Lucy Bell would get here. Sweetheart, let's grow old together. Love like ours. Sweetheart, Let's Grow Old Together, sung by young Kenny Baker. And say, Phil, um, Phil, did uh, Lucy Bell get here yet? Not yet, Jack, but she ought to be here any minute. I wish she'd hurry up. You said she, uh, you said she mentioned my name, didn't you? Yeah, she did. What'd she say? Well, she said if you'd have sent her flowers, it'd have been much nicer than the one she got from Kenny. <laughs> oh, yeah? You keep out of this, Kenny. I didn't say anything. Well... Anyway, when Lucy Bell gets here, I want everybody to behave themselves. Especially Kenny and Mary. And Don. I'll be all right. Yeah, I bet that's her now. <laughs> Gee, do I... Do I look all right, Mary? Not to me. Hmm. 
Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I want to take this opportunity of wishing you and Get your family... <laughs> I wish... I wish somebody had set a trap for him. Oh, Jack, Luke is coming to the studio. Well, well. Here comes Lucy Bell now. <laughs> well, well. Hello, Lucy Bell. Hello. Oh, I'm just tickled pink to see you again, Mr. Danny. Oh, Lucy Bell, why don't you call me Jack? After all, I'm your brother's friend and... Yours, too, I trust. You mean that? Yeah. You're not acting, are you? <laughs> Only like a fool. Mary. <laughs> oh, and there's Mr. Baker. Thanks for those poinsettias you sent me, Mr. Baker. Chuck, I ordered flowers. <laughs> now, Kenny, what do you think poinsettias are? A couple of dogs? Yeah, with spots on them. <laughs> That's right. Uh, tell me, Lucy Bell, uh, you've been in town a week now. What, what have you been doing with yourself? Well, I met a nice young man who lives next door, mm -hmm. and he took me out to Hollywood Bowl the other night. The Hollywood Bowl? Why, there, there are no concerts there this time of year. <laughs> we didn't mind. <laughs> I mean, have you have you done anything interesting? Oh, that was very... I mean, have you seen any of the sights around town? Don't raise your voice to me, sir. Oh, uh... Sorry, Lucy Bell. Now listen, Jack. Either respect my sister or take up my option. <laughs> oh, there's my brother. Hello, Philzy Lamb. <laughs> Philzy Lamb. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Stinky Pie? <laughs> That's your fault, Mary, for telling you my nickname. Yeah. When I tell him your real name. Why? <laughs> You know, you sure have a big crowd in this studio. Is that the audience? No, that's Don Wilson. The audience is over here. <laughs> Although he's an audience enough for anybody. Eh? You know, Don is our sponsorial mouthpiece. He is? What's that? Well, that's, uh, Lucy Bell, that's... Oh, you explain it, will you, Don? I'll be glad to. I knew you would. A sponsorial mouthpiece, Lucy Bell, is a fellow who says the Jell-O is the finest, tastiest dessert in the world, and it has that new extra-rich fresh fruit flavor, and every day millions of people eat it. Oh, that. Yes, Lucy Bell. That's Don's whole life giving sponsorial hints to the world. Well, Lucy Bell, if you'll wait around till the program is over, <coughs> we can go out somewhere and have a sandwich, you and I, or a dance or two. Oh. I'm sorry, Jack, but the boy next door was waiting downstairs to take me for a drive. Well, some other time then, huh? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, bye, everybody. Bye, bye Lucy Bell. Bell. Come again. Bye, Jack. Goodbye, Lucy Bell. Have a nice time. <laughs> we will. <laughs> hmm. The boy, the boy next door. Say, Phil, who lives next door to you anyway? Well, Robert Taylor lives on one side and uh, Jackie Cooper on the other. Oh, Jackie Cooper. Well, he's just a kid. I don't have to worry about him. <laughs> Robert Taylor don't have to worry about you. Yeah? Play, Phil. What kind of a <laughs>
Remember, played by Lucy Bell's brother and his orchestra. And now, folks, tonight, I would like to settle once and for all an argument that has been the talk of the musical world. It seems that... Say, uh, Jack. Yeah? Uh, what about that special Fourth of July sketch you announced last Sunday? Well, Don, I'm not in a Fourth of July mood tonight, and, but there will be some fireworks. I've got something very important on my mind that I'd like to discuss with Phil Harris. So if the rest of you fellas want to go home, it's all right with me. Okay, as long as you don't need us. So long, Jack. So long. You can go too, Mary. All right. Come on, Kenny. Let him try to get laughs now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not in the mood for laughs. So long, Jack. Goodbye. And there are other things in life besides comedy. What's on your mind, Jack? Uh, come here a minute, Phil. Phil... Uh, how many men have you got in your orchestra? Fifteen. Fifteen, huh? Well, next Sunday, I'd like to have you add about thirty more. A real symphonic organization. But what's the idea, Jack? Well, Phil, there's one argument I didn't start that I'm going to finish next week. I'm going to play Schubert's immortal classic, The Bee. <laughs> Thank you, music lovers. <laughs> but, Jack, uh, do you think you can do it? Oh, Phil, here's the music. You can see for yourself it's a simple composition. I don't know. There's a lot of notes there. Well, those aren't all notes. <laughs> anyway, we should have screen doors here. Anyway, you can go now, Phil. I, I just wanted to get everything set. Okay. Yeah. Well, Phil, I'm... You know, I'm kind of tired anyway, really. I don't feel like working much more tonight. And, I, you know, I haven't been feeling any too good. I'll, I think I'll... I think I'll lie down here for a minute or two, yeah? That's a good idea, Jack. That cold has got you down. Yeah. So long, Phil. So long. Uh, see, this, this couch feels pretty good right now. That, uh, yeah, I don't know how I ever got through today. Uh, uh, uh. Excuse me, folks. You know, I I haven't been so sleepy since last Wednesday night between the hours of 9 and 10. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. You know, folks, you know, life, life's a funny thing. It's, I don't know, it's the it's little things that upset you. You take a, take a fellow like Alan who, who, yes, there. Life sure is. Uh, yep. Yep. I'll have a big symphony orchestra. And I'll show that guy up. <laughs> B. B. Nothing but B. The busy B. To be or not to be. J B. J B. F A. F A. Fe. that laughing? Well, as I live and breathe and stuff a doll in my mouth so I won't laugh at his jokes, if it isn't Jack Benny. Fred Allen. Allen, what are you doing here? So you're going to play the B. A ha, ha, ha. Yes, I am. And when I get through with the B, it'll be number one on the hit parade. <laughs> hit parade? Why, you couldn't even get into the parade of the wooden soldiers and you got a head start. Oh, uh -huh, no? Now, listen to me, Allen. Last Wednesday night, you brought three kids up to your program, known as the Three Smart Girls, didn't you? Yes. And what did you ask them? I asked them why they call themselves the Three Smart Girls. Yes, and what did they say? We said we never listen to Jack Benny. <laughs> now, listen, Alan. Listen to me. You've dragged my name through musical mud long enough. Well, what are you going to do about it? See this gun? If you've ever prayed, pray now. Oh, what's the use? You'll play the fiddle anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, that's the last quip you'll ever make. Take this! Wait, wait a minute. Don't shoot, don't shoot. <laughs> I thought you were a coward, you spineless yellow jellyfish. <laughs> 
Yellow? Why, you're yellower than a canary bird with a jaundice. <laughs> That's the last straw. Now, before I bump you off, Alan, I just want you to remind you of a few things. You said I couldn't play the bee at the age of ten, didn't you? You brought the postmaster from Waukegan up to testify against me, didn't you? You brought the photographer. You brought my violin teacher. You brought our family pawnbroker. Why, for two more bucks, you could have gotten my father. <laughs> You accused me of picking up old cigar butts. You said I'd never live to be 104 and a half. You made me the laughing stock of the nation. And Europe by short way. You laughed, you lied, you ridiculed, you slandered. And you called me a squirt. Well, the squirt is turned. You reach the end of your rope, Alan. <laughs> Take that. And that. And that. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up, Jack. What's wrong? <sighs> oh. oh, nothing, fellas. Nothing. I I just had a dream. And, gee, it was swell. <laughs> Play, Phil. Nearly every home has some particular specialty. One grand dish that the whole... Yeah. And I'm here to tell you about that kind of a hit. Combination of luscious figs and strawberry jello. Here's how you make it. First, dissolve a package of strawberry jello in one pint of hot water and fig juice. Chill until slightly thickened and then fold in one cup of sliced stewed figs. After that, just mold and serve with whipped cream. And what a swell combination that is. Golden figs and rosy cherry strawberry jello. Good to look at, better to taste. No other gelatin dessert has Jell-O's extra rich fresh fruit flavor. So when you make jellied figs, just be sure to make them with the one and only genuine Jell-O. The last number of the 18th program in the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Oh, Jack. Yes, Don. A uh, telegram just came in. Do you mind if I read it? No, no. Who's it from, Don? Well, it's from Alton Cook, radio editor of the New York World Telegram. Oh. It says, uh, congratulations to Jack Benny on the new honors he has won in the World Telegram radio editor's poll. Stop. For the fourth consecutive year, he has been voted America's favorite comedian by the radio editors of the United States and Canada. Stop. The Jell-O program was picked as the all-around favorite show for the third successive year... And uh, Don Wilson was voted the best studio announcer. Stop. Well done. Congratulations also to Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, and Kenny Baker, who have maintained their same high standard. Signed, Alton Cook. Well, thanks, Alton. And all of you fellow radio scribes for this great honor. I also want to thank my listeners, my cast, and my authors. Hey, wasn't that swell, Mary? Uh, come on, let's go. <laughs> all right, my dream man. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> At this time, the entire country is shocked by one of the most unparalleled catastrophes in recent years. The victims of the floods need not only your sympathy, they also need your help. Give. Give as much as you can afford to help relieve the intense suffering in the flood areas. Send your contributions to your nearest Red Cross chapter and be as generous as you can. Thank you. The part of Fred Allen was played tonight by Lynn Hayes. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston came to you from Hollywood. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles. Fifteen seconds until nine. <laughs>